Monster came out in 2001 and everyone was like, The game received great reviews and kind of acted as Baby's first platformer. Being a healthy balance of jumping and punching, Jack and Daxter is one of those games from your childhood that you remember being the bee's knees. It was fun, colorful, and created by Naughty Dog. Yes, Naughty Dog, the people known for such happy-go-lucky games such as The Last of Us. <laughs> Yeah, those people! But the game created an imaginative world that's both mature and innocent, and really showed what a good platformer game could be. It was the start of a brand new IP with new mascots for the 6th console generation, and it kicked off the start of one of the best trilogies on the PS2. And also, the whole trilogy is kind of available on PS3 right now, you should go get it, yeah, do that, please, love yourself. But anyway, if you're new to this game for some reason, here are a few tips, tricks, and heads up for people who don't know sh** about this game. So you play as Jack, a yellowed hair mute who is supposedly super great even though all he does is punch stuff and kill animals. Boy, what a guy. But one day, while hanging out on a spooky island with your fugly best friend Daxter, they come across a pool of dark eco, aka the evil goo, aka the plot device of the whole freaking series, aka sometimes it kills you, sometimes it turns you into god knows what. How does this stuff work? No one McFreakin' knows! But anyway, Daxter being the babe that he is, falls in and turns into a talking otzel, and yes, let's all pretend we know what that is. But it's all up to Jack to find a way to reverse the dark eco effects. Even though Daxter's human form is kind of a walking disaster. Now, the story starts off small but gradually builds up, and you have to find out what happened to all the eco magic ghoul sages and all that jazz. It's simple, that's for sure. But eventually what starts off as Dinkus's first adventure to fix his friend quickly turns into an adventure to save the world, and something about ancient gods and the source of all power and yeah, yeah, the, 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 stuff and the things and the and the doodads and um yeah but although the story is simple it's imaginative with fun characters and even though i have no idea what the frick frack these guys are species wise there is deeper lore hiding in the corner when it comes to eco and the world's creators and it does come into play later on in the series there's also crappy one-liners from daxter and the game is really colorful like i know that's a weird thing to talk about but trust me when i say it's kind of important in comparison later on but man there are some good color palettes going on here hot diggity dog mm -hmm. got some good co good color mm -hmm. good good job so the game is open world from the start. You can go anywhere at any time, but new areas are gradually unlocked by collecting stuff and moving on to the next set of locations. Also, collecting stuff! Jack and Dexter is a hardcore collect to win kind of game. The gameplay is simple as crap and what you'll be doing is just collect stuff. The big things that you'll need to get your hands on are power cells. These little circle hovering thinging majigs. <laughs> Ugh, you are gonna get a lot of these guys. Now, you'll be getting these things in many, many different ways. From solving puzzles, to trading with NPCs, to climbing high places, playing mini games, and driving the world's dumbest hover bike, it's kind of amazing how many frickin' situations there are to get power cells. You think with just how many there are casually sitting around that there would be like, I don't know, a case laying around somewhere, but nope. Trading orbs with ancient deity-like thingies and beating up pelicans is the way to go, I guess. But you're rarely doing the same thing twice, which is nice, I guess. Now, gameplay-wise, this game is simple with a side of salad. You're gonna jump, you're gonna kick, and you're gonna punch, and that's about it. You're gonna end with the same abilities you started with. There's no weapons, no power-ups, kinda maybe a little bit sorta hold on, people who've played this game before, I'm getting to it one second, and there's also no XP. Now, the thing about this game is even though you don't get more powerful, the game is gonna get gradually more challenging, and some of these sections can get really, really hard. So, with that being said, while you don't need to collect all of the power cells in an area to move on to the next set of locations, I would recommend trying to collect more power cells than you need in the beginning because later on it's gonna get really challenging and there are gonna be some major rage quitting moments. <laughs> I love video games, you guys. They are so great. Okay, like I said, there aren't any permanent power-ups, but the Eco Junk, aka all the colors of the rainbow funk, does play a part of the gameplay. There are six different types of Eco just chilling around, and they are gradually introduced as you progress through the game. There's Blue Eco, Red, Yellow, Green, Light, and Dark. 
Blue Eco makes you go fast and activate certain things. Yellow Eco lets you shoot crap out of your hands. Red makes you punch real hard, and green gives you life. Light Eco isn't important, and as we've established, Dark Eco, which makes no sense and will kill slash hurt you for some reason, but didn't kill Dexter when he fell in. I don't know, it's just temperamental like that. Does this not bother anyone else? Okay, just me, moving on. Now there are chunks slash vents of Eco that you can run into, and they will let you use their powers for a limited amount of time. Now they are almost always, always used for something. They aren't just hanging around willy-nilly. So if you see Eco, there's probably a power cell or orbs nearby. Guys, this stuff is hard to miss. It's bright, hovering, glowing goo. Use it. Now the one eco that is literally everywhere and doesn't mean crap is the green eco. This stuff is in chests when you kill enemies, it's McFrickin' everywhere and it's dumb. You got three life chunks and there are little green eco balls that are supposed to refill your health after you collect enough. But you need 50 to refill one chunk. No one has time for this. I don't have time for this. It's too many naughty dog, it's dumb. Now why is this so dumb? Well, collecting 50 takes a really, really long time and this game has no death penalty. Like Jack is borderline immortal because dying does nothing but send you back to the nearest checkpoint and these things are everywhere. Don't be afraid of dying in this game. It takes seconds to respawn so don't even bother collecting the green eco to refill your health when you can just throw yourself off a cliff to get full health. Nailed it. Okay, so this game is big on the collects, but keeping track of the junk can get a little hectic. Now in the menus, you can see what items you have collected where and what's still missing. And if you're one of those crazy, I gotta do 100% everything collector types, stop this video and go see a therapist first of all, and then check your menus often to see if you got everything in the area before moving on. Now here's the thing, this game is hard to 100% complete. Is it worth it? Personally, not really, no. Mainly because it just unlocks the secret ending, and with the power of the internet, you can just be a filthy casual and look it up if you want to know what happens. So unless you're really into it or want to brag about how awesome you are at some game that came out 14 years ago, collecting everything is a tad anticlimactic, and I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Alright, so here are a few tips and things you should probably know before you get started. Rolling then jumping in min roll is the fastest way to get around. It's cool and dumb at the same time. 10 out of 10, get to it, you nerd. Fall damage is a thing in this game. If you do a spin kick right before you hit the ground, it breaks the fall and you won't get hurt. Also, also, the spin kick will give you a little more distance when jumping, so just spin kick a lot, alright? Sometimes you'll need to do someone a favor to unlock a new area in the world, so be sure to talk to everyone. Don't forget to hit the button to activate the portal at the other sages huts, it's used to fast travel between other areas. Collect as many precursor orbs as possible, you'll be needing them for sure. And this is by far the weirdest and most inconveniently sized currency I've ever seen in the game. I, I don't get it guys, but hey. Listen to the buzzing sound to find the scout flies hidden in the red boxes. And there are a lot of audio cues in this game, so listen to the world and it will listen back. <laughs> yeah, just kidding, that's weird, but for reals, listen to the world guys, it's important. Be careful when swimming and don't swim out too far. Mm, what you say mm, that you only meant so while Jack and Daxter is a fantastic third-person platformer with a lot of variety and memorable characters and settings, its core gameplay elements can get rather frustrating and the constant collecting can get a little old after a while. But this was Naughty Dog's first big step into the sixth generation console world and they created something that a lot of gamers hold dear to their little nostalgic hearts. And even though this game is like 14 years old, it still holds up and is one of the PS2's trademark games. And it's just good guys, it's just good old fashioned good 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 and I hope this basics beginners guide makes your gaming experience a little better so please rate comment and subscribe and I hope you have a fantastic day hey how's it going did you like this video well if you did why don't you go watch another one you nerd also why don't you go follow me on Twitter so you can keep up the date on what's gonna happen next want to watch me get the footage I need for these videos head on over to my twitch so you can see me play games and talk to chat where no one is safe if you have any tips for this game or any future games please leave me a comment tweet me or send me a message later you big nerds